here on Sports Channel. Sammy takes the breaking ball strike. A little slur there. I haven't seen the new uniforms, have you? No, I heard it gorgeous. No. And they'll be nice. Make sure your first look tomorrow night. Last ball on his way. Got it on the fist of Sammy. And quickly the count 0 and 2. What I started to say earlier, though, Hawk, is interesting comparison between the two pitchers. Greg Hibbert, obviously a low-ball pitcher, has been getting nothing but ground ball outs. He has the one strikeout, one flyout by Steve Sachs. Last seven guys have been retired on ground balls to the left side of the infield. And on the other hand, Andy Hawkins, get to that in a second. There's a fastball up and away. He has two strikeouts, and everybody else has been retired in the air by fly balls. Nothing hit really hard except for Ventura, so he's a high ball pitcher. That fastball foul back. Count remains one and two. Fly ball pitcher against a ground ball pitcher. The ground ball pitcher right here, Hibbert, is doing much better. ERA is pitching a lot more innings, giving up less hits, and look at so many more innings pitched. Leads and walks. They're, neither one of them is a strikeout pitcher. Look at the opponent's batting average. 300 against Hawkins, only 231 against Greg. Breaking ball looped out in the short right field. Here comes Jesse. Ooh, I thought it was going to slip in there. Another fly ball out for Hawkins. He is a fly ball pitcher. Toronto has just taken a 2-1 lead over Oakland in the bottom of the fifth inning. A triple by Manny Lee. Scored Pat Border. Situation one in, man on third, and nobody out. Yes. Come on, you bluebirds. <laughs> Here's Ozzy. Ozzy 0 for 7 in the first two games. Yeah, we're definitely seeing a different Andy Hawkins. He has a lot of confidence in that number one. He and what they'll tell you is besides velocity, he has a lot of confidence on his location. Yeah, by far the best stuff that I've seen him have since he's been in the American League. We're only in the third inning, but you can see a remarkable difference. Whoa. Last three starts, he's been tough. 2.75 ERA, but no decisions. He had no decisions in the month of June. Here's a 1 1 fastball. Took just a little something off that one, missed outside. Yeah. Ball tailed away, went yeah. down a bit. Turned it over on him. Mm hmm He's got a few more pitches, looks like, to work with. Last time we saw him, he threw a cut fastball and a slider. That was it. That's hard. He had a right two. Alvaro Espinosa. And that'll look for the Sox. Another one, two, three inning. That's three in a row for Hawkins. And after three, no score. Summer savings advantage of value-packed Plymouth Sundance with 750 cash back, or get a thousand back on sporty Chrysler LeBaron Coupe. Factor to dealer incentives might save you even more. Drive the Chrysler Plymouth Advantage today. Get the best of the 90s at Aero Chrysler Plymouth in Midlothian. How do you get real premium beer taste in a non-alcoholic brew? You start with a real premium beer. That's how Anheuser-Busch makes Odul's. Odul's is carefully brewed, fully fermented, and cold-aged. Then the alcohol is naturally removed, retaining all the great taste. So how do you get real premium beer taste in a non-alcoholic brew? Ask for an ice-cold Odul's. Odul's, the taste will win you over. 
Rules fans, we don't sit on our hands. We make the loudest noise in Chicago town. We raise the roof right up, and the sound comes down. We are the six man. Coming this summer, Budweiser presents... We are the Bulls fans. The Shoot the Bull three-on-three classic. There are divisions for all ages and levels of ability. Call 943-5800 for details, or... We are the six man. Check the Chicago Tribune. We are the Bulls fans. Here's a reminder that White Sox games are always in more enjoyable with a group of friends or colleagues. For more information on single-game Sky Suites, special group rates on picnic and patio parties, call the White Sox group sales office at 312-924-1000. And there are suites still available for this homestand against Detroit and Baltimore. So come out and see the Sox and enjoy it from one of those great Sky Suites. Roberto Kelly hits the first pitch to Ozzy. Ozzy has been a busy camper out there. That's one, two, three. Ground ball out for him. Pretty routine for the Ozzaroo. Tell you what, Greg Hibbert's really got an advantage, don't you think, Hawk, having those two guys on the left side of the infield when you know he's going to face a lot of right-handed hitters and they're going to inadvertently try and pull them. They won't be effective doing it, but Ozzie and Robin Ventura on that left side of the infield have just been terrific. I think it's the toughest side, left side of the infield in the American League. Don't know about the National League, but in the American League, in my opinion, that's the toughest side to get a ball to. Right here, with Ventura and Ozzie. Mm -hmm. And with Greg Hibbert, of course, taking advantage of that being a low ball pitcher. He appreciates it as much as anyone. I would say the next toughest would be Fernandez and Gruber. Yeah. I don't think Kelly has as much range at third as, as Robin, and for that reason, that's the reason I think that ours is a little stronger, mm -hmm. a little tougher to get it through. Sure. Two balls, no strikes to Sachs. Fly to right. Can't think of anybody else. No, there's not. In that league. Not in this league. That's broken bat right side. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Let me finish that state. Good pitching. <laughs> Steve Sachs trying to go the other way, but it nubs it off the end of the bat. So he's 0 for 2. Well, our boy Junior Felix came through with a single to score Manny Lee. So the Blue Jays, two runs in, Manny first, one out as they lead the A's 3 to 1. Bottom of the fifth. All right. on a little half swing hit a comebacker to Hibbert his first trip curveball off the end of the bat right side yes 12 in a row retired by Hibbert and after three and a half no score I've always loved watching baseball nothing beats an ice cold coke at Comiskey Park but being from a family of centers I was never too good at playing baseball You could get hurt trying to catch a curve this way. Kids, get White Sox baseball cards at the July 29th Sox Brewers game and hear the Sox on all new 67. The last season in historic Comiskey Park. Years from now, you'll say you were there. There's one of the original Crimson Fannies right there. <laughs> yep, you never did that, did you? Never. Good. Here's Lance. He popped up to left field. That would ruin all the wonderful things I think about you. Outfield short. Swung around to the left. Takes it up high. Here we are in the bottom of the fourth inning. And nobody has reached base yet. Mercy. Pretty unusual. Both pitchers are in a pretty good groove, though. No doubt about it. They're both working very quickly. They're getting it and throwing it. They both have a good routine. Yes, very much so. They're not thinking a whole lot. Don't give the hitters a whole lot of time, either. And plus, their defense has been very good, too. They're on their toes. Sacks. See some sparkling defensive plays from that guy out there on the mound. 
is working quickly as you look at Melito's brother. I'll tell you what, he was throwing a dead outside of the ball. Reports on him, uh, first few times that he pitched for the Yankees this year, he was outstanding. Unfortunately for him and the Yanks, injured his arm, and they don't know when he's coming back. Here's Robin. Takes a fastball strike. Robin hit a rocket out to right field at Barfield, made a nice play going away from home plate on. There's another hard hit. Right to Sachs. Quickly two out. Yeesh. All right, uh, Yvonne's going to break it up right here. Good call. Good call, good call. Now, the last time he came up, Hawkins showing a lot of confidence in that fastball, throwing three straight fastballs. Three let's fastballs away, gonna, too. Yeah, let's see how they can try to work in here. Change some sort of breaking ball. Up the middle, Espinoza. One, two, three inning for Hawkins. Half to four, no score. an art. I've done it for years. I love working with nature's own ingredients. I love carrying on a skill that's been passed down for generations. And I love reaching that moment when a good beer becomes a great one. We brew our beer with great care. It just isn't right to abuse it. A reminder from Budweiser. Got the summertime blues? Toyota's got the cure for the summertime blues. Toyota's summer sales event has the summer's biggest savings, like Toyota trucks, with savings up to $700 or more on factory options. Then add in immediate delivery, special financing, and very special summertime factory incentives. Right now, your Toyota dealer has the cure for the summertime blues. Toyota's got the cure for the summertime blues. Toyota's summer sales event. Don't miss it. the story top of the fifth inning and a reminder milk duds and jolly rancher candies offer kids a chance to become a celebrity bad boy or girl Winners receive great prizes and the chance to go down on the field here at Comiskey Park to meet Sox players and today's winners are Jaime Baum and Lucas Nikan here's bye bye bounced out to Ventura his first trip takes a fastball off the plate who are those guys again? Balboni. It's <laughs> high in the count, 2-0. Oh. <clears throat> yep, you're right. Thank you. There's a strike. And a count, 2-1. and one. Beauty. Give him a good arm action. He did. Pops him up. Ventura. On a good change from Hibbert. Thirteen in a row. Retired by Greg. And here comes Barfield. And he's really feeling, fooling those Yankee hitters with that outstanding arm action on the changeup. Sometimes it's not in the greatest of location, but the arm speed is so good and the change of speed, just excellent. Boy, that's a good call right there, Wimp, because even if you do, as you mentioned, make a mistake in location, if you've got that good arm action like Hibbert has had thus far, you can get by with some mistakes. Sure. And that changeup makes that fastball look a little bit quicker, too. About a foot and a half. Oh, yeah. Here that comes that give him that good arm action, did he? That's it. Get foul. Going foul. Great play. My goodness. Bare hand. Our fans just <laughs> shine. They are outstanding. <laughs> this guy will not be denied. You get some high fives. You deserve them, buddy. I don't like that hat he's wearing, though. No, but look at these hands. <laughs> Piece of cake. Swirling around home plate.
plate. Got to hit a good spot right here. Just misses the outside corner and a count two and one. shirt out there behind the background. Barfield's had a couple of instances in this series thus far where he has had a problem with somebody moving around back there. Watch out. That fastball completely fooled him. Jesse was sitting on that local right there and got the express. Yeah, he did. He was way late. You can heat him up right here. You got two options the way Hibbert's been throwing. Heat him up and inside a little bit, or give him that real good motion with the change. Or two options right here. Let's see what Clark wants to go with. Well, he got him out inside last time with a hard slider in on the hands. He broke his bat. I don't know. That's the whole thing. Here that comes was like change. change, yeah. Yes. Yeah. There's that good change. As we keep pointing out, it wasn't in a good location. The pitch was up and away. But he had Jesse completely fooled by the arm action. The speed of the pitch is of maximum importance right here, especially when you set him up with the fastball on the previous pitches. Actually, he missed that pitch with the end of his bat. Had he made contact, it would have been a number off the end. to Ozzie his first trip. Jimmy, just 26 years old. We were talking about him earlier that Stump Merrill says that he's just not durable behind the plate. But when he is back there, that he's as good as anybody. He said if he plays three or four or five days in a row, he has a tendency to get hurt. And again, it's just an illustration and, and a compliment to a guy like Carlton Fisk, who's played all these years. If that's hit in the left field, that's playable. Pascal. That is 15 in a row retired by Hibbert. They will go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Scoreless. Do you need a car? Listen, each year government agencies auction, sell, and liquidate thousands of cars and trucks, and the bidding starts as low as $30. Government vehicles, luxury cars taken from drug dealers, criminals, and thousands more seized, repossessed, sold through bankruptcy proceedings. Now find out how you can grab the car you want at government liquidation and bankruptcy prices. Bid as low as $30 for Porsches, Mercedes, Ferraris, Corvettes, family cars, and trucks. Find out how to get the car you want now. Call 1-900-HOT-AUTO. That's 1-900-468-2886. Just $2 a minute. Get the summer savings advantage of value-packed Plymouth Sundance with $7.50 cash back or get $1,000 back on sporty Chrysler LeBaron Coupe. Factor to dealer incentives might save you even more. Drive the Chrysler Plymouth Advantage today. The best is what you get. Get the best of the 90s at Larry Roche's Elmhurst Chrysler Plymouth in Elmhurst. I've always loved watching baseball. Nothing beats an ice-cold Coke at Comiskey Park. But being from a family of centers, I was never too good at playing baseball. You could get hurt trying to catch a curve this way. Kids, get White Sox baseball cards at the July 29th Sox Brewers game. And hear the Sox on all new 67. The last season in historic Comiskey Park. Years from now, you'll say you were there. This copyright program is presented by the Authority of Major League Baseball and the Chicago White Sox. It is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written permission of Major League Baseball, the Chicago White Sox and Sports Channel Chicago is strictly prohibited. You know what I mean? Huh? It's 
It's the bottom of the fifth inning. Pasqua, Kittle, and Karkovice. And how long has it been? A little trivia question for you. How long has it been since you've seen a game halfway finished? And Nary, a base runner. Never. I don't think I have. I'll tell you. There has yet to be a base runner in this ball game. Both pitchers, Hibbert and Hawkins, have been perfect. Greg threw five, and here and Hawkins threw four. I don't ever recall. Play four and a half no. innings and not a base runner? I've seen some great pitchers' duels over the years, but my goodness, I don't ever remember nobody ever getting on base. Well, I mean, uh, it's very, very possible it could have happened. Oh, you sure, know, but I don't recall it. See, Hawkins wants that. He wants to throw that fastball. Inside, too. Jammed him. Flowers will not be able to get there. Well, Hawkins being a high ball pitcher is a better matchup against the White Sox because you have to say that the Sox are a low ball hitting team. Blowing away hitting team. Yep. Major League team is a good low and away hitting team. Where the power is. Staying inside here. Nope. He wants to throw that fastball again. Garen trying to get him to throw the change. And there's the high heat as Tom talked about. He's got much more velocity than this afternoon than he did at Yankee Stadium when we first saw him pitch. There it is, up and away. Danny Pasco wants that pitch down a bit. Jam wow. again. That's a jam it's right there. He didn't even hit it high enough for the catcher to get over there and catch it. Garen didn't pick it up real quick. He thought the ball was out of play and then tried it. But you're right, he still couldn't have made the catch. Well, he's living inside on Pasqua. Well, you can see it coming as far as Hawkins, you know, as we mentioned back in the second inning. When, he had, when Gary was putting down the three and the two and the change, and he wanted that number one. Boy, that'll tell yeah. you a lot about a guy, how he feels that day. He obviously believes in that fastball this afternoon, no doubt about it. Well, Mark Connors is the bullpen coach over here, and I think one of the more astute pitching minds in the American League. And, that's popped up, left side. Jimmy Lafritz fighting that win. Makes Whoa. the catch. And of course, Mark Connors, Billy Connors is a pitching coach, but I'm sure they confer. Mark Connors is a real great believer in the fastball. And you show me a guy who's really a great believer in the fastball. It's like Gabby Hartman. I was fortunate enough to be on the team that he was a coach on. When I was a rookie in Kansas City, as Kitty steps in, he says, in his opinion, Gabby's opinion, the secret to being a good catcher was taking a guy's second best pitch and making it an out pitch. If you could take his second best pitch and make it an out pitch, then you're doing your job as a catcher. Now, what he's saying by that is you're, you're taking a guy's best pitch because it's hard to get by on one, and you're giving him two alternatives. There's a breaking ball, one of the few he's thrown, and the count one and one. Well, another thing that he has changed, changing speeds a lot better. He was pretty much one speed. He's throwing hard fastball, hard slide, and they really weren't that hard. Now he's got to throw in somewhat of a slurve and a changeup this afternoon. Jammed him with an inside fastball. Blowers coming back. Yep. Well, from a hitting standpoint, maybe this game is going a little too quick. Yeah, it is. You know, from a hitting standpoint, if I were playing in a game like this, I'd just take all the time when I went up to the plate. I'd get try to get Hawkins out of that rhythm and that routine he's in. Yeah, he's in that quick rhythm. He wants he's getting the ball and he's throwing it, much like Greg Hibbert. They're both working very quickly, and their defensive team obviously very sharp also. But they haven't had to make any great plays yet. Got that fastball by him. Aside from the play that actually Barfield made on Ventura. How many balls have been hit hard in this game? That was probably it. Ventura's hit too hard. One he scalded, the other was hit semi-hard. Barfield hit, uh, hit the ball fairly hard. First time up in the hole. 
Ooh. breaking ball. Like it was a strike. Clark will take it. And the count two and one. <laughs> Dale Scott said, okay, I blew it. Let's go. <laughs> Jared's telling him all about it, too. Yeah, right. Payback. Whoa. My goodness. There's some more gas. Garen's setting up. I mean, he's setting up in the left-handed batter's box, and the umpire's staying right there. See, Dale Scott, when Garen moves way out, when he wants that pitch way outside, he's staying right where he is, so he's pretty much blocked out of the outside corner. We're seeing a nice... A nice thing here as far as the art of pitching and catching that we're seeing two batteries that are really in sync together. They're working as a tandem. That's inside. Ball four. That's the first base runner of the ball game with two out here in the bottom of the fifth inning. And the Yankees don't like it. That, that was a fastball. It really came riding in on Karkovice. Let's take a look at it. That ball's running in, running inside, in and off the plate. You're saying if you were umpiring, you'd call that a strike? I'd have rung it up. Yeah, well, I mean, you can't give him a couple inches on the inside, give him three inches inside after giving him three inches on the outside. Well, how big is that plate now? I, they've got something good going out there today. I'd have rung him up. <laughs> Here's Fletcher. You and Ed Rungi. <laughs> that ball gets away from Garen. Here goes Cart. Look at the effort by Bob Garen. Mercy, what a good effort. I would imagine it'll be a pass ball. What an effort he gave. Yep, look at this pitch. It's a fastball. He just misses it. Just misses it, and Karkovice, take your hat off to Karko, too. He got a good jump and made it to second base. There are some guys in this league that would have not budged off of first. Not our guys. No, no, not, not this team. No, they would probably tried for third on that. <laughs> some of them. Come on, Scotty, pick Ooh, him up. Ooh, good swing. One and one to count. Broken bat single, Scotty. Come on, Scooter. You can do it. <laughs> That's what players say to themselves on the bench <laughs> in a situation like this. Come on, blip one over a second, Scooter. Oh, there's that inside fastball. Two and one to count. He's hitting 476. He's 10 for 21 against the Yankees this season with a homer and four RBI. He's seven for his last 16. Three hits yesterday. Coming alive. Three and one. Oh, Sammy on deck. Okay. Hitters count. Stumperoo.
breaking ball. That was ball four, so indeed, the rhythm. Uh, Andy Hawkins right there working from the stretch for the first time this afternoon. And good job by Scotty Fletcher. He's sitting on fastball, and he didn't swing at the breaking ball. Didn't get himself out. So, runners at first and second. Now for Sammy. Sammy, he eight for his last 23. Key for Sammy is to lay off that high fastball with Hawkins. He's had his biggest problems with that pitch. The fastball up and away. Make it come down. You hit it up the middle and get that base hit. second Fletcher at first lays off the high gas and the count evens at one when the day comes at that young man right there 21 year old Sammy Sosa his time is the spouse so often learns how to lay off the high fastball up out of the strike zone. You're going to see one heck of an offensive player. Two and one. All right. He's got to come down to you sooner or later, Sammy. Be ready to pull that trigger. Hawkins knows he wants to pitch Sammy upstairs. Just misses it, I think. Way back, I don't know, as Lamford. Now the wind's got it. Oh! And he makes the catch. That'll do it for the Sox. Nothing across. No hits, no errors. Couple of men left. And after five, no score. Mercy. I take care of my body. Play a lot of sports. Play to win. I go to Sportmark. They got the best. At the best prices. For the way you play. The everyday Sport Mart price is guaranteed the lowest in town. I get the difference in cash. It's the ESP guarantee. For the way you play. Save on men's over-the-cap cotton tube socks from Ridgeview. All white or assorted stripes. Six pair value pack, just $9.96 at Sport Mart. Sport Mart, for the way you play. There's something new coming to you from Budweiser. Something completely new. It's completely different and completely refreshing. Introducing Bud Dry. It's cold filtered for smooth draft taste and dry brewed for no aftertaste. So if you're looking for smooth draft taste and no aftertaste, try Bud Dry. No score, top of the six. Here's a reminder, the White Sox are offering fans a unique opportunity to go back in time and experience a game at Comiskey Park in 1917. Briars Ice Cream's Turn Back the Clock Day will take place Wednesday, July 17th, when the Sox take on the Brewers at 135. White Sox will wear 1917 replica uniforms. General admission seats will be 50 cents, and all other tickets half price. You can't beat that deal. Call Ticketmaster at 312-559-1212. Look at Hibbert, 59 pitches, 37 strikes. Left side, Ventura. <laughs> 16 in a row, retired. Here's a catch of Bob Guerin. He also bounced out the Ventura. Then four ground balls to Robin. Four to Ozzy. Two balls hit out of the infield.
Good change. Excellent. enough that was danger zone right there and the count 0 and 2 that's a hanger Jeff Torborg happy to see that ball hit straight back so it's two strikes so was Hibbert yeah hey well you can get away with a lot of hanging pitches today that ball Sammy Sosa that's a upper tank shot yesterday Ventura backs up a tough play for Robin. It's going to be a base hit for Bob Guerin. It's a play certainly Robin could have made, but it would have been a very difficult play. Made a tough one right here. Watch the top spin. It's an 0-2 curveball. Pretty good. I'll tell you what. The ball went down. He probably could have wasted it a little bit better than that. Boy, that ball had some bodacious top spin. Look at it. Just kind of eats Robin up right there. The only way he'd had a chance at that one, if he'd have been able to charge it just a bit, get it on the short hop. Get that in-between hop. Those are tough. Those are the ones that eat you up. I don't think that was that was an either-or situation. Now, I don't think in this particular scenario that, that's a base hit. Something wrong with Bob Guerin down there. I don't know. I think I might have. Robin, as I said, it would have been a tough play for him to make. But with a no-hitter going, I think I'd have given him an arrow. I agree. Of course, the way things go today, you know, there was a, did you see the error on the replay that Cal Ripken Jr. made? No. Did they recall? It was an error. It was an error. And evidently, the, uh, Cal Ripken Sr., Frank Ramos, and all the guys with the Baltimore club put so much heat on the official scorer that after reviewing the tapes again, <laughs> he changed it around. But it was, it was just a flat error. Huh. Took his eye off the ball. The ball hit him on the side of the glove, bounced away. The runner advanced. That's an error. Sure. As Espinosa steps in. So we'll see how Hibbert reacts working from the stretch. First hit of the ball game right there. stop now tries to make the play with the glove what an excellent effort now there's a base Whoa. hit on a hit and run so two infield singles by the Yankees here in the sixth inning have Hibbert in the jam there you see it is hit and run Espinosa handles the bat very well Ozzie coming across just couldn't make it he tries to flip it with his glove that's the kind of presence on the field Ozzy has. He knows he can't get up and throw anybody out. Like he tries to flip it behind him. Can't make the play. So Roberto Kelly, very dangerous hitter. Two runners on and only one out here in the sixth inning. Low off the plate and a count one and oh. Ball by Hibbert. Ball on the strike. Let's see, Roberto Kelly with runners in scoring position hitting 259. No homers, 16 RBIs. There's that good change. Good motion from Hibbert. And he's on top of ball and two strikes. change again. Kelly trying to stay back on it. As the on-deck hitter, second baseman Steve Sachs. Hey, 
jammed him, ate him up. Infield fly rule in effect as Kittle makes the catch, and that's out number two. with that pitch with that good change up down and away so there's two out Steve Sachs ever a dangerous out is the hitter now Saxy runners in scoring position he's hitting 255 well, I agree with you here in respect certainly if you need a long ball he's not the most fearsome hitter in this lineup but in a situation such as this indeed he is a tough out yeah If the ball's hit in the left or right, Sox have a good opportunity if it's a line drive to make a play on Guerin, who doesn't have a whole bunch of speed, even with a two-out situation. Yeah, they shorten up a few steps than they would normally because of the wind factor. Sammy, very short in right field. And that is Sack's best stroke. Line drive to right. Seen him do that a hundred times during the season. There you see that defense. They're straight away and fairly short. Pasco playing a little deeper in the left field. Good fastball strike and a count evens at one. Change. Uh, Jim Dandy. Steve Sachs' bat is not long enough, as you can see. He misses it. Gone. 